Now joining me in the studio is Honorable Desmond Olarewaju for B, um, who is a reporter for the People's uh, Reporters. Uh, NG, and he will be joining us to discuss some of these national developing issues. Honorable Desmond, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to be in your studio. Good, Good morning, morning Chidi. Okay. Good morning to you as Good well. Good morning. Well, very quickly now, let's uh, set the ball rolling. The there is so much uncertainty over the federal government's plan to boost food production in the country, and uh, we have seen the federal government, you know, taking so many measures in the past. In the last couple of months to ensure that the food crisis is curtailed. However, there are varying reports. One is saying that uh, food prices have gone down in places like the FCT, in Yobe, in Brno, in Adamawa, and in some other publications, it's saying that uh, food prices are skyrocketing in other parts of the country. How do you react to this? Um, largely, you know, when the, um, the security Federal Secretary Council met over the uh, crisis of uh, food insecurity in Nigeria. There are some agreements or uh, resolution reached during that meeting, which led to the splashing of uh, the um, 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 what was it called the tax, as in the fees that were supposed to be paid to custom was splashed for food like sodium, uh, maize, and other things. And also, federal government made an effort to import into the country about 250 million metric tons of maize and all that. As well as for businessmen, just about a month, some few weeks ago, uh, the federal government also gave a breakdown of the people who have the legitimacy or people who have the right to make this import. It is not open to everybody. Not everybody can just import if you don't have the capacity to mill certain amount of rice or certain capacity you are not expected if you don't have a farmland if you are not a major player so that it will not affect you know those who are producing and the, the, don't forget that this intervention was just to cushion the effect of um, the cost of food yes. in the market as well as the unbearable inflation of food cost don't forget that this is government there are bureaucracies there are steps that will be taken before the implementation successful implementation they have to do the paperwork they have to do some stakeholders meetings and they have to put things they have to do guidelines and it is the guideline that was read out some few days or weeks ago so now what you need to understand is this it is not a, a it is not a jet kind of thing yes it's not a fire brigade it can't just happen at it once. It can't just happen at once. It will take some time. In short, before we start seeing the effect, it may take up to three good months, yeah. 90 days, because this food are meant to be imported from outside the country and supplied into the market. It will take time of reprocessing, repackaging, and distribution channel before you can get the effect. Now, what government has done is that this would last between now and December, I think, for six good months. And the effect will run into about another maybe six months because you don't bring the goods in and immediately distribute all. It's a large quantity of food. Yes. So now, that is one. And don't forget, another aspect to that is that federal government has promised to import immediately 5,000 trucks, mm -hmm. tractors, to help farmers. Not only that, also to provide employment to 10,000 young Nigerians in agricultural value chain. Now, what that means is that while this is a work in progress, we are not expected to get the results immediately. So I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if there are claims from year and year that food prices are still high. It is obvious fact. But there are some foods that will be shipped, like those perishable goods that, you know, Everything was crazy before around uh, around June, July. It was I mean, so crazy I mean, that you cannot even get vegetables in the market at affordable rate. But because of the season, because of the weather, and because of certain inter interventions of the federal government by distribution of fertilizer, and these are things that can go within just six weeks and all that. So in the market right now, you can see that certain items have reduced, like what we use in cooking and all no, that. No, Non-perishable goods have, have, reduced, have, sort of reduced, have reduced drastically, drastically. not just in Abuja, across the first nation. At least over the weekend, I was in Ondo State. Last week, I was in Lagos. And I can tell you categorically that these particular items have actually dwindled. Even yam. 
it's also affected you know, no, the no, prices no. dwindling down. One of the major reasons why food prices have continued to you know skyrocket and uh, food you know prices of food have continued to skyrocket and food crisis you know have sort of worsened in parts of Sokoto, Kano, KB and the rest is because of the flood that has hit about 10 different states in that part of the country. Uh, are, are we still seeing this translating to maybe the southern part of the country or the western part of the country considering that there is usually a mass you know inflow of food from the northern region to these uh, other regions of the country you know as as an effect and aftermath of this flood definitely you're going to have the effects of this flood not immediately some of the food shortage you're talking about are not as a result of the flooding it will come the effect will come after you know these things are not uh, like I said, like rocket science, or it's these things are not um, um, what does um, fire brigade approach? It doesn't happen immediately. These are effects that you feel after some days, after some weeks, not things that happen immediately because some of these things that were flooded or carried away by a flood team is not something, it's still something that is in the process of going. You know, don't forget that there are storage facilities where food are kept for distributions and all that and processing. So you may not attribute food insecurity in Sokoto, Samfara, and some part of the northeastern state to be as a result of flooding. Why it is a major terror. The flooding right now that is happening in the country is a major terror. And that is to tell you that federal government and the ecological uh, people in charge of the ecological system, they need to know what to do to see how to contain this flooding. And all necessary agencies around the Ministry of Environment that is meant to up in creating pathways for waters like drainages and sensitizing the people about where to farm and how to farm as well as how to where to dump their refuse and some human factor that can contribute to flooding should be contained as a matter of urgency because whether north or east or south definitely wherever these floods affect the people it will affect food security coming in the coming days or coming months now now considering the fact that uh, some of these northern states had been ravaged by drought droughts in the last couple of months yeah. uh, they have been you know praying for rain even in states like Kogi yes, yes. and the rest and then all of a sudden there's rain but then it comes with flooding uh, how do we I, I mean i know the national emergency management agency has swung into action but do you think that perhaps the federal government on its part can take other adequate measures to of ensure course. that the food shortage that is about to hit as you rightly pointed out yes. can be curtailed before it becomes worse there is you know you know i told you earlier in this show one of the times that our government are rather reactionary than be proactive you see, in 21st century and in this period and time, it is not time that we should be talking about flooding, sweeping away our farm produce and all that, where we have a government that is working. You see, whenever you see flooding, it is to tell you that there are some mechanical, there are some natural and some human factor that is responsible for flooding. So federal government, state government and all stakeholders need to take precautionary measures to see that that there is certain interventions that will prevent flooding you know that water that is flooding are uh, and uh, uh, sweeping away our farm produce yes. can be used judiciously to supply good foods where you plant dams where dams are supposed to be there are certain if mechanical well yes there are where mechanical activities that should have been taken upon by this government that have been neglected that is causing the I biting mean, effect year, of this flooding. Year after years year of decay, you see year flooding of happening in parts of the country and usually there are warnings you know done beforehand by the meteorological agency and these warnings are sometimes not taken seriously firstly by the farmers themselves secondly by the state government governments that are supposed to be the first responders of course. to these warnings of course. i mean the federal government is at the top there's very little it can do to you know stop the effect of these floods but if warning comes and the state government itself does not take action then certainly they have to be held accountable don't you think so of course but unfortunately how many state governments are accountable to the people let alone requesting for accountability from them you see we run a kind of government in this part of the world that are not accountable to the people 
and therefore you may not be able to get accountability from them and even when you you know there are no provisions in the, in the constitution that empowers the citizen to charge these people to provide accountability and the only place where you can ask for accountability is doing elections and voting you see those are some of the challenge of uh, governing uh, governance in Nigeria most leaders are not accountable to the people and let me tell you it is a work in and it is a it's a, it, it has to be jointly uh, effort yes. between the federal government and state government every one of them have the argument because there are certain tax responsibility cannot be taken upon by the state government they need to work together with the federal government to achieve results but some people are saddled with the responsibility of what of warning early sign and early warning there are ministry ministry of environment that is their work but you know when you do not create that opportunity to create to escalate you know to speak about something in a way that you can it potent great dangers you did not for, for before so one is to be armed yes when you're not doing your job when you don't even carry out research these agencies are meant to be carrying out research but they sit in their office doing nothing and these things always happen like an emergency. emergency it shouldn't be an emergency no this issue in the first place shouldn't be an emergency and that is why we have people to check to force to 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 to, 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 to check to check forecast mm. into the future you know, you have information about metrological, uh, you know, situation in the country even before it gets to that time. Yes. There are so many things that we need to get right to achieve results. It is not just to come here and just the federal government, call the federal government. There are certain agencies, sisters agency, and employees of the government that are supposed to forecast and transfer the document to federal to, government to, to and the even ensure quarters. compliance. And even ensure compliance. But because we are lackadaisical like in this part of the world, we always tackle management, management, management after, it must, after it must have happened. We rather need to be more proactive as people, as government and citizen, if we must avert some of these dangers. And let me tell you, another thing that is a big mess now that the federal government needs to work on is this issue of insecurity. That is the major reason for food insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, if you look prices. at what has been happening in the northwest, yeah. in the northeast, and in the north central, where there have been continuous attack on farmers, it I feel it is deliberate. The National Orientation, uh, the National uh, Intelligence Agency, as well as the um, the bodies, the security, the security architecture in this country needs to do more in terms of investigating why is there at an attack on farmers. Is it to cost food insecurity so they can tag this government as? I mean, as, I mean, I mean, if you, as if, you respond, if you look at government. It, if you look at it quite critically, Honorable Desmond, it it might not be completely unconnected to, to some excuse me to some sort of economic sabotage of by certain elements in the country to ensure that when they attack these farmers when they attack these farms it will in turn have a ripple effect on how much yield is gotten from the farms people now become too scared to go to their farms people now become too scared to even go and harvest what they have planted and it just creates this ripple effect that you know sends a shock wave of food shortage across the country thereby translating to what we all now know and cry out as food crisis as a matter of fact, Shijuke, if you investigate, you meet any farmer today as the reason why is there so much increment in their, in their farm produce. They, were at, they always had to put that, not as shortage of fertilizer or support from government, but as a result of insecurity. Insecurity. And this thing looks like a mirage, even to the federal government, for not able to provide solution to insecurity uh, challenge. In the last nine to eight months, there have been continuous killings of farmers. There have been ravaging of farm, farmland by floor, uh, by uh, 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 cattle rustlers Ross, Ross and the rest of them. So, for me, these areas should not be, should not look as if it is ungovernable because the way this things appears because it's now becoming frustrating you know when something happened the first time it happened the second time it happened the third time without any solution it now creates that uh, that and now it is happening that it is, yes it's become frustrating so the federal government should rather seek for more scientific 
solution to this a drastic solution or seek help scientific scientific means seeking help he needs to look for a holistic solution to this if the ministry of uh, livestock is the solution federal government should expedite action to see the coming and the function of this I, ministry i mean honorable desmond last week we we saw a report that the nigerian military the defense headquarters in particular has sent out military personnel to man and guard farms in northwest and north central nigeria that. This is a report that I'm, Even I'm, I'm, very, yes. I'm very sure you, you, yes, you, also, you also Even read. Even complementary effort, 10,000 members of the civil defense were also jointly attached to the military personnel that to secure farmland in the north. This should be replicated in the north central, in the north, in the southwest, southeast and south-south. Because it is every part of this country that people complain. Imagine, even in the southwest, a lot of people complain of what? Of the, uh, of the infiltration of Fulani S men and killing of arbitrary killing of people in their farmland. It is deliberate. So, see, let me tell you, Shijoke, it is more disappointing that we have heavy security architecture and apparatus in this country, but yet we are unable to secure this country. And the reason is not far fetched from sabotage, like you rightly said. And that is why, if you say sabotage, they are not spirit, spirit do not sabotage. It is people, individuals, friends of the government, friends of the country that can be in this act. They can be traceable if the government is serious. Let me tell you, the, the government are preoccupied with a lot of problems. But face one and fight it to a logical conclusion then before you move to another one. And that is why I will still want to join my voice with other Nigerians that are calling for let's localize our problems and decentralize power for for local solution to everybody's problem because the causes of some of the crisis in the north might not be the same in the southwest might not be the same in the southeast now nobody is talking so, so, about so, devolving so, so, so a, a nobody a is talking about the solution an holistic solution not is it will it will lead to a ripple effect it will be multiplying when you want to solve Nigerian problem, you need to look at some root causes of the problem. Because right now, what we are trying to do in Nigeria is management of this crisis. So we are trying to solve this crisis on the surface. Yes. But if you want to get a, a, con a concluding and a logical solution, you need to look at all the issues on the table. And the all tied down to what? Decentralization, police police decentralization to the to the regions yep. as well as devolving pass to this regional regional kind of governance which will create what we call competitiveness positive competition in the state where states and regions will now start to evolve and develop at their own pace and the formula that were given to the north we work for the north the formula given to the south we work for the south but then we now start preaching patriotism had him sent to us. Now, now that is the rallying point. Now, that is the nexus. Now, following the uh, federal government's new policy on on food imports, some stakeholders have you know sort of shared their concerns as to why this might not be possible anytime soon. Considering that one month after uh, the policy was yes. rolled out by the FG, the federal government is still fine tuning it. Yes. You know, and and uh, but I just want us to have a brief recap of these on the Vanguard newspaper, and I'll have to get you react to it. Let's uh, see what the Vanguard newspaper says. Why grains importation won't happen soon by stakeholders? One month gone already as federal government fine tunes policy. Customs awaits awaits list of importers. Stakeholders divided on policy. 100 tons of capacity excludes our members, says Rim Fan. How do you react to this, Honorable Desmond? You know, I was earlier talking about this. That some few days ago, we saw the federal government give uh, guidelines yes. on this particular issue that is being reported on the vanguard. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is this. Government is systematic. The federal government or the president might make some certain uh, pronouncements, pronouncement, yes. but it will not lead to any effect. Only state of emergency 
can happen immediately. immediately. But when it comes to bureaucracy, you need to bring stakeholders together. You need to look at the policies. You need to safeguard and, and create certain policy or laws that will lead to its sustainability that will make it not crash in, in the middle. I mean, this is this is perhaps a short-term that policy. That is, it's a short-term policy. Uh, yes. So, and and one month after, it has still not taken effect. Don't you think that perhaps you know Nigerians will start feeling like you it's know the problem of Nigeria is this: we don't do the necessary talking before we make certain pronouncements. All what is happening right now at the federal government and the stakeholders level, that is supposed to be the first thing that are before the before pronouncements. now. Like I tell you, we sleep a lot in this country. It's not about staying awake or two. We sleep a lot because we are too lazy. You know, when the former, former president said the youth are lazy, it's not just the youth that are lazy. Government workers are lazy. Uh, Nigerians are lazy generally. Not lazy in terms of working. We are lazy, we are lazy when it comes to thinking and prevention, you know, thinking ahead. You know, you should be, as a human being, you should be thinking, you should have foresight. It's not about your sight, it's about your insight. That would determine the way. That's why somebody said imagination is better than knowledge. You need to always envisage what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next tomorrow. We know that there are policies of the federal government that will crash our economy and affect homegrown food, affect our cost of living. And yet we did nothing, absolutely nothing, as a government, as a people, as a stakeholder. And the same thing is applicable right now. I wouldn't blame them. Month will go. It will take up to three good months, like I said earlier, before we start seeing the event. But the good thing is that the multiplier effect will lead to next year. But what I just want to charge stakeholders involved in this is that they need to speed up. They need to speed up all these bureaucracies, all these stakeholder conversation, all these things. Because at the end of the day, it's still an avenue to, to make more money. Because at, the, at any point in time, yeah. why they come together, do a town hall meeting, talk about this, Money is being expended. And somebody, some people, when you give them a responsibility, a committee responsibility or a work, they want to deliberately delay it because so, they so enjoy to, to, to mail for their the, the selfish benefits interest. And benefits. That's why I would like to join on Lucia Gomba Sanjo. That's one of the major challenges of this federal of this government today is because we have a lot of people in the position of leadership that are there for only selfish interest and not national interest, not just the elected ones. Even some civil servants, even some workers of the government, they don't care about the people as long as it befits and benefits their own selfish interests and their hunger for unnecessary money. Well, Honorable Desmond, I, there's something else I want you to react okay. to uh, before we wrap up this discussion on food insecurity mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, according to a report by the Leadership Newspaper, an FAO report uh, and projection about 31.5 million Nigerians risk acute hunger. 31.5 <laughs> million Nigerians out of about 200 and, and uh, 20, 30 million Nigerians currently. It's quite an alarming figure, if you ask me. First of all, I'd like to ask you, Chijuke, where is the report coming from? You know, in this country, sometimes I don't just trust these uh, figure and that and that. Why it is a fact? that a lot of Nigerians are living in abject poverty and that automatically relates to acute you know starvation now the point is that we are not doing the right thing in this country it has taken this country additional two good years after the federal government and the national assembly have made availability of fund for population commission yes and to date we have not heard anything and nobody is being asked any question you see this is one of the problem people don't get punished for their mistakes look at what happened in Ogun state and it's now causing this government uh for f, 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 f fleet yes to be granted and property being confiscated because of carelessness and recklessness by people in position of leadership and yet nobody is doing anything the so-called mis misbehaved leaders we still have the right to come and address the media that it was a blunder it was a mistake and yet nobody is talking about their arrest they need to pay somebody if you if people get punished for their errors and their mistake get the consequence of their action why they are still alive 
you see that Nigeria will start working in the right pedestal. You see, there are a lot of things that is happening right now as a result of not getting punished for corruption, not getting the adequate punishment for misbehavior. Pe pe people, people who, you know, sort of offend the public or have, you know, done some sort of mischief are often handled with, you know, baby gloves. Of course. And that is the reason why it is lucrative to be, God forbid, to be a criminal, to be a corrupt leader, than to be a what? A sincere and a patriotic citizen. I mean, we were having a, and then we were this, having a discussion. This is where leadership. Program. This is where leadership comes in. Yes. You see, for me, I don't have issues with some of the policies of Mr. President Achiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. But then I still have my reservations about his kind of leaders because there are things that emotional intelligence will tell you, will teach you that you don't even need all those robust and those serious policies to get Nigeria working. There are simple, simple things you will adjust as a president that will create a multiplier event to the followers and the country will begin to work. In the area of corruption, what has stopped the president to make a statement as regards the disappearance of Yaya Bello? What? Haven't you, had, haven't you thought about that? It's been almost swept under the carpet. Almost four good months. And nothing, nobody. The president, number one person, does it that the president is not getting the filler? from the EFCC, from the courts, why, the, why does the president decide to look away? Those are the questions. And there are so many issues like that. Even in NMPC, the president should to look away. Concerning Dangote, concerning Dangote yes. the president will look away. NMPC is not working, despite the fact that about 20 trillion naira has been spent in the last 20 years for overall maintenance of these refineries and promises upon promises. And yet, you are not asking the right question, perhaps. But, but, but is, it, is it the duty of the president it to is, ask this question? Let me tell you. The duty let me tell you. Of the let me, I'm coming. There are appropriate agencies. Yes. Mostly appointed by the president. They are working for the president. And then, because they are not doing their job, you are there to demand accountability and to demand results by every means possible that the law has provided you as the president of the federal republic of nigeria the least you can do is to replace that person for somebody who is more hunger to give you result there are a lot of people in this country that are patriotic gbk i yes. must confess there are people who will die in the process of getting the right result for this country a lot of people in this in position of leadership are not patriotic i am the president of the nigerian nessus where we try to put Nigeria back on the map of greatness. And our interactions with a lot of government agencies shows that we still have a very long way to go. And then I can't come here every day and start crying and keep crying because I want to help my country. And yet there are a lot of people that are out there doing the same thing that I'm doing that get frustrated by some of these government appointees, some of these government uh, 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 elected officials. and uh, this, See... The kind of level of um, patriotism that is being displayed by some Nigerians is so magnificent. But then they are not getting the uh, the support, the complementary the, 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 support, the complimentary support by the same needed. government that is calling for patriotic citizens. So that's where it beats my imagination and understanding. And that is why this morning, for the first time, I am I'm joining my voice with that of Olusha Gorbassanjo, that the reason why Nigeria is not great today is because we have elected people who do not have the interests of the people, mostly, not all of them, in position of leadership. Qu qu quite surprising. Now, as we wrap up this uh, particular topic, Honorable Desmond, what aggressive measures do you think that stakeholders in this particular issue, the federal government, Rim Fan, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, and, you know, even security agencies, what measures can they take aggressively to tackle food insecurity in the country well what government has done is marvelous it's marvelous and um it's just implementation it's, it's not about measures this government knows what to do but they are failing nigerians in implementing what to do yes we have it's a good thing we are talking about insecurity and the military which other sisters organizations yes. have given their word that they are sending troops thousands of troops to guide our farmland that is what i would advise to do and they are doing that now but 
let's see how far they will go with it in terms of their seriousness to really do what they say that they will you know do. most times in government they preach what they they will just preach something and they don't do what they preach this time around i want some level of patriotism by the security agency that is one then number two these uh civil servants the ministries and the agencies that decided to do the responsibility to ensure the paperwork move smoothly should not be expecting people to sort them, to give them money or to induce them. That's what usually happens. They will delay your file. You know, the federal, the federal government, the customs said, they are still waiting for what? For the list yeah, of importance. The list, because it is not open to everybody. They had to do some level of verification. And the verification, if you go where they are doing this thing, some of them, it is fake verification. They are waiting for, you, waiting for you to sort them, give them money. It is happening in every organization. So there is a lot of corruption. There is a lot of corruption. So now, because of the sake of Nigerians, the stakeholders started with this responsibility to ensure the swift response of this policy to ensure that there is food on the table of many Nigerians should please pity the hungry Nigeria by fast-tracking Every processes that will lead to what provision of the list and importation of this food to Nigeria because one way or the other, one month is too much. What processes? What are they trying to check? At check? It is not. I mean, you projected three months, so <laughs> no, because I am a Nigerian. Yes. I know how it is. So, so you, 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 you I, know, I factored. Works. I factored in all the bureaucracies, the bottleneck, and some of them waiting for inducement before they can release your name and all that. I put everything together. So, so that's what I'm projecting. But crossed, normally, fingers crossed, in the next three months, we hope to see the policy. Yeah, definitely, it, you will see the effect. Everyone will speak about it. The paper will report it. You will see it that people will smile. I would have you back in the studio to confirm Of this. course, of course. All right. Well, as uh, intense for scarcity hits the nation, particularly in Lagos and in Abuja, fuel queues, long fuel queues have returned amidst pri price hikes uh, in parts of the country as a you know liter of petrol sells for about 980 naira in Abuja and 850 naira <laughs> in Lagos. The federal government has also cracked down on filling stations through the NMDPRA, filling stations selling petrol to people in jerry cans. We've seen these reports on front pages of about three national tabloids this morning. Now let's just pick up the first newspaper and uh, have a brief overview of that story on the front page of the first newspaper you'd find beneath the masthead first scarcity hits lagos had long queues price hikes government crackdown now this is um yet another news honorable desmond it's not uh, new to Nigerians, the issue of false scarcity, long queues and all of that, but it seems rather to have happy. hit harder than usual this time around. It is rather very much disappointing and embarrassing to President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu under his tenure from the day one that it was announced and um, he swear the oath uh, of uh, office. Yes. He took the oath of office at the Eagle Square in May 29 till date. He has not been able to find a even temporary solution to the issue of fuel scarcity and price cont of, and the uh, controlling of the price. It's so disappointing. It's an embarrassment to him. If he thinks the way I think, it's so embarrassing. Because there has never been a time, Chijuke, yes, that we can say sincerely that Nigerians have not been suffering of this anomaly since the coming of President Bola Tinubu. Yes, we can attri attribute some to first subsidy remover. But the question I want to ask is that, what is the cost of subsidy? What was the cost of subsidy? And NMPC have certain questions. I'm coming. Yes. NMPC have some answers, some answer to give to Nigerians. There are questions. How I wish I have the opportunity to, be, to meet with the GMD, Melekiari. I will ask him certain questions like, one, today, the Minister of Finance has just told us that the Nigerian government spends $600 million every month to import fuel into this country. Now, people who are benefiting from that $600 million are the same people who promised us last year, December, that our refinery that have been maintained in Port Harcourt will work. 
Later, they told us June. It will work. Now, they are telling us August. And August is almost ending. Wrap, wrapping up. Wrapping yes. up. And then, nobody is made to face the rot of law. These are the things that is affecting us in this country. You see, all this divide and rule, all this politicking, Nigeria is maturing. We are getting sense every day. They should ask us, as at the time, where we are paying subsidy. How much were they paying on subsidy to give us fuel at 197 naira? How much are they paying now? You know, with that 600 million dollars being spent on the importation of fuel. Then number three, they should give us a clear answer. What has happened? Before you are paying subsidy a certain amount of money, we are getting the fuel at 197. Now you are no more paying subsidy. What is happening? Why are we getting it at 950 naira? Does it mean that what you are paying on liter of diesel fuel before now is up to up to 800 naira? Or up to 750 naira? So there is certain mathematics that is not working. That is not and the aligning. government and the government is not basing here enough. That is what I can see from this talk. But if the government feels that I am speaking jargons, they should invite me. There are certain questions I've listed down. I want to ask the president. I want to ask the well, GMG. Well, well, you, you might as well just throw this question. No. Here, Honorable this, I've just started now. Yeah. I've just started asking you. They should tell us in clear terms how much in Naira were they paying on a liter to produce it at 190 197 naira before the coming before, of the president. Before the coming that of is the, the president. First, that is and, one. And the removal of first subsidy. Now, the 600 million that is now spent today on importation, what is the channel of distribution and what return is government making on the 600 million every month? Because they are still selling. Well, well both, both the NNPC. They are selling. The private NNPCL NNPCL importers. And, major yeah. importers are importing just like NNPC is importing. And don't forget that NNPC is a company under federal government. They are doing the major importation. Private sector sells sometimes at par with NNPC. Yes. That means NNPC too is making money for importing fuel into this country. And yet the minister of finance is telling that we are spending 600 million. So how much billion is federal government making at the end of selling this for now there is another report there is another report that the nnpcl is owing international um uh, yes in, international yes. traders a yes. debt of for about 6.8 billion us dollars. yes nnpc has openly debunked this they didn't debunk it that statement is political and technical if you're not careful you will not understand what it means why that is a fact the first statement is said is this sonaya is this sonaya i think sonaya the spokesman yes. to the nnpc he said that it is a it's an international standard to hold that that is how the business is being run i don't know so i was just thinking when i was reading the news i was just thinking does it mean that even your united states of america are owing importers uh, uh as in uh, also owing france are they owing chinese are they so, owing? so it's it's a standard that is allowed in the industry internationally that is what that is the language he holds then he now said he now focus on whether they are actually remitting any amounts to the federation account and he did said they are still the highest you know remitters, uh, remitters in terms of, tax, in terms of tax in terms of tax. tax from the business they are doing why we will be expecting that from january till now just like we have the claim that they've not actually made or give certain amount of money that this is what we get from our crude get it because they've already mortgaged it they've already borrowed money for from it they should i don't know why federal government is so scared or the got people in position of in, saddled with the responsibility to man these organizations yes. are so scared of Telling the people the truth. The more lies you tell the people, the more you get the job harder and complicated. Now, now this complication and intense bureaucracy at the top is perhaps too intricate for people to start digging into. Because one, they don't have access to documents. They don't have access to private information, highly sensitive documents yes. and all of that. However, <laughs> however, what we can openly see is a scuffle between NNPCL and local distributors where NNPC is blaming local distributors for the shortage of fuel because they are selling fuel petrol to people in jerry cans. How reasonable is now, this and how true is she this? Joking. She joking. You know, there is this proverb in Yoruba that 
It simply means you're leaving what you know what they call what yes on your skin. You are now what that you are fighting hard to kill eczema. You're not doing much more to remove the what from your body, but you are struggling fighting hard to remove eczema. Now, you see the federal the MMPC are not sincere. Personally, I have my reservations about that organization. Because for NMPC to spend trillion, billions of naira, dollars, million of dollars in maintenance of our refineries and it's not working. And you know why these things is so is so dramatic is that everybody have interest. I will tell you an example. You know, in a situation whereby you dip your hand into the national treasury as the head of the house. Yes. You understand? And the members of the house are now taking some, stealing some from you. It will be difficult for you, it will be difficult for you as the head of the house to demand, you know, sincerity and accountability from the people because they are, they are watching you. Yes. You see, let me tell you, every aspect of our society, we need a turnaround from the topmost leaders to the, to very the followers. We need a U-turn. We need a national reconstruction and change of value system. Today, there are a lot of people who are stealing government money and government is aware and government is doing nothing. Why is this happening? It's happening because it's protecting their interest. It is the, in their own interest that those people are stealing that money. Systematic because those corruption. Systematic corruption. Because this money that is being stolen on daily basis, that from the federal government to the local government, they are used in sponsoring campaigns and some activities of this same government. And that is the reason why we are not moving anywhere. If government can rather be selfless, I'm sincere to these people that they called followers. I tell you that a lot of things will change in this country. MMPC should get our refineries working. That is the protest I want Nigerians to start. Get the refineries working. First, don't demand for bad governance. Bad governance, governance is a large concept. It will take you about 24 years to understand governance. It's too big. Now your problem. Demand for just one thing. Maybe every year we should be having a national protest. Demand for just one thing. What Nigerians should be demanding now is not uh, uh, ambiguous. The ambiguity around governance is much. But if you want to get this country working, demand that NMPC must produce fuel at all costs. Whether they are going to evoke spirit, whether they are going to bring expatriates, whether they are going to do whatever they would do to what? make our refineries in worry, not only in Portacourt, in worry, in Portacourt and in Cardinal, these things is a marching order by the people. It will work. It's either it works or what we pull this country down. Well, well, well let's let's hope it doesn't get to the point where no, we have to put the country down <laughs> on a despot. However, I believe, so I believe a lot of Nigerians would want to know if these refineries start working in Wari, in Portakot, in Kaduna, and the rest, is there by any chance a possibility of fuel prices drastically what? dropping? So maybe not to what it used to be, but to a reasonable level where it is affordable by ordinary Nigerians. Because it is getting to a point where people are now packing their cars and they are using public she transport joking. to get around. She Do you know why fuel is so expensive? Because of what? Exchange rate. rate. Get that. And you only need exchange rate when you are bringing something into the country. Nigeria is a sovereign state. An independent country with its own legal tender. And the Naira is valuable in Nigeria. Now, ima just imagine. That's why I said imagination is better than what? Than knowledge. Yes. Imagine that you don't need to import anything. I know it's not possible for us not to import anything. Imagine that we are not importing even one liter of petrol into this country. And don't forget that Nigeria holds the crude. Nigeria has the machinery that the tech, the crude, and Niger the expatriate. N Nigeria refines the crude. N and Nigeria sells. How much are we going to buy? How much are we going to buy? The it is the government, the federal government knows what they are doing. I can swear with anything. Our refineries that are not working, the federal government have the clear information. But they are not courageous enough 
to tell the Nigerian the truth. A lot of people are benefiting from these anomalies. And we shouldn't, as the citizen, allow this nonsense to continue. If we must have a future that we demand or we deserve. I want to call on the Nigerian people to see themselves as a rather patriotic citizen by asking the right questions. Not as a psychophant, not as a psychophant that is singing praises. I'm a party member. I have my parties and I have people, but I will never join the psychophancy of sing, praise, singing when I know that there are small, 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 small things that the government is supposed to do and they are not doing. Well, I must thank you very much, Honorable Desmond Olariwaju, for finding the time to come on the program and share your thoughts with us. The pleasure is mine. Thank you very much.